This is a video one for Chadwick's Third World War. We're going to be doing the tutorial in uh, Central Europe, in Germany, right on the East German, West German border, because that's the densest part of the entire map. Uh, essentially, um, the Cold War was about the U.S. keeping the Soviet Union from seizing the Ruhr Valley, which is a few hundred kilometers from the East German border. So we're going to be looking first at movement. Each hex is 45 kilometers, and each turn is about one week. But because of multiple opportunities to attack, you're looking at combat about every 48 hours. A key element of movement are the different terrain types, which are listed in the charts that accompany uh, the rules. You can see here the different varieties of terrain, which are fairly uh, complex. There are trains that refer to the Middle East, trains that refer to uh, the Arctic. Uh, key terrain are the red major city, the black minor cities, ports, airfields, and oil fields, because they all refer to victory points. So in the game determination, uh, depending on where the port is located, it's in the rules, uh, these are the targets that need to be captured in order to measure how well individual sides or individual countries do uh, in the combat. A key element of movement is stacking. Different hexes can contain different numbers of uh, units. The unit measurements are by brigade. A brigade is indicated by a single X. A division, which is three brigades, is indicated by uh, two Xs, sort of standard Napoleonic uh, notation and NATO notation. However, some units have uh, different, or rather some divisions in NATO and other countries have a different number of brigades. This is the chart for that. And here we have the stacking limits, which... Uh, sort of makes sense. Um, the standard clear hex contain, can contain 10 brigades, but if you're looking at an Arctic mountain, uh, it's, it's a very difficult terrain. You don't have a lot of roads, not a lot of flat terrain and mountains, and so you have fewer units that can stack there. The principle is you cannot attack into a hex with more brigades than could stack in that hex. So if you're attacking up a mountain, you're not bringing your entire army, you're just bringing uh, that part of your army that could ultimately settle if they win and they capture the target mountain. Now here, we have the movement chart. Uh, again, it's with, the, it's with the, uh, the charts. This is the type of train over here. These are the different movement costs. There are mechanized units, motorized units, which uh, uh, that's indicated on the uh, unit chart, the different symbols. There's air mobile, which are units that have a little helicopter symbol. And then there are units that look like a, an X in a box and they're leg mobile or infantry. And these are the different costs for the different trains. As you're getting into wilderness and uh, sand, uh, the train gets much more rough going as well as mountains. But looking at clear woods rough uh, in uh, different parts of the world, it's not such a difficult terrain to go through. Also uh, of import are zones of control. These are the six hexes that go around units. Uh, different types of units have different types of zones of control. Um, and the principle is either you're going to pay one uh, extra movement point or two extra movement points to move through a particular hex. So returning back to our example here, uh, here we have uh, East German units that are pushing through on their turn between two uh, American units, and American units all have air mobile zones of control. It, it basically reflects the Apache attack helicopters that reach out and inhibit movement around American units. For this East German unit to move into this hex, we need to know the movement points. Every single land unit in the game, regardless of type, has six movement points. Six movement points, which are not written on the piece itself. So, knowing this, we look at the symbol. That's a tank symbol. Uh, this indicates that the unit is mechanized, and therefore we look at the mechanized uh, part of the chart under uh, this type of terrain, which is rough woods, and rough woods costs two points to move through. Furthermore, 
Because these are American units, moving from one zone of control, which are the six hexes around unit, to another zone of control is an additional two points. So to move from here to here would take up four points. And the unit could move no further because to move into an additional hex over here, which is also in a zone of control, or over here, uh, would exceed its total uh, movement capacity. So this is as far as it could move, and then it would subsequently attack. It's also important to identify whether the unit is in a zone of control, because for some of the phases, if you are in a zone of control, you can then not do a, a, sort of an exploitation type of uh, combat. Uh, and finally, there are air mobile units, and these are units that have helicopters, and they look like this unit here, for example. And these units can fly uh, over hexes, and uh, they pay much less, because they're basically helicopter units flying between mountains, and they're useful to fly over and around um, uh, uh, target units. So this is a quick description of movement.